Hi, this is Jeff Heaton. In this video, I am going to show you how to make use of a Docker image for TensorFlow and Python, Keras, the, the things that we're using in this course. Okay, so if you look on Module 1 and you scroll down, you'll see that here, actually, I have several options for you to install various ways that you can do TensorFlow and Keras like you'll need for this class. Here is a link to the Docker image. This is the Docker image. It's on Docker Hub, so you can get to that pretty easily. I'm assuming that you already have Docker installed. If you don't, just go ahead and Google Docker and install the package file. Uh, I'm using a Mac right now, but you can use Windows on this. I will say that Docker generally works better on Windows 10 than Windows 7. Windows 7, you have to use sort of a lesser version of, of Docker. I haven't worked with it a great deal in 7, so just something to be aware of. Once you have Docker installed, you typically do this from the command line. And it doesn't matter, really, if you're dealing Windows or Mac. This part is largely the same. So what you need to do is they give you the download command here. I'm going to go ahead and just copy that. Now just to make it completely clear, I already cleared out everything, all the Docker images that I had, at least on this particular computer. So if I do Docker images, uh, you'll see that I don't have any. We're going to go ahead and install that one. Now, Docker is done through the Docker command. On some machines, you may, Unix in particular, you may need to do sudo, sudo, and then Docker and whatever you're going to do. On the Mac, the, at least the way I have it set up, that is not necessary. So I am going to go ahead and do this. This is going to pull, download, the latest version of the Docker image that I have up on Docker Hub. The Docker file for this too is also stored up on GitHub, so you can get a link to that as well. Basically, if you, if you want to do any modifications, you may want to download my Docker file, but if you just want to use it for class, you really just need to follow the steps that I have here. Okay, so now that is downloaded, we can see that it's here by doing and there's the image. So the next thing we're going to do is create, before we run it, we're going to create a local directory that we can actually store our files into. I'm going to download the course material for my deep learning class and put that in there just, just to give you an initial idea. Okay, so I'll put it in this directory.
Okay, I just, just copy this over. Or move it, actually. Now I'm ready to run it. So this is what they recommend to do to, well, they, they being me, this is what I recommend to do to run this particular Docker image. I am going to grab this. This user's jheaton temp, that's where we're going to want to uh, mount the volume. So you can take all of this almost just as it is, docker run. But I'm going to put in this. You'll put in whatever location. If you're Windows, it's going to be C colon or D colon or something such as that. That's how Windows does things. Now you can run it. Okay, this is Jupyter Notebook running, so we're going to access it through a web browser. Jupyter Notebook does this really stupid thing here where it does not give you the exact address, but you do need that token there for security purposes. So what I'm going to do is paste in that URL that it gave me, but the problem is it's giving you two things here, this or that. You want to get rid of all but that. And also put localhost in there as well. But you run that. Now you're in a Jupyter Notebook. And notice this mount directory. That is, that is our actual folder that we created that I put my class examples into. Now from here, we'll get to that in a moment, but from here you can create a new um, Python 3 or R. I gave you both programming languages. I, I work with both of those quite a bit. So um, if you're, so let's, let's actually, I mean, if you want to create a new one, you can just do that and you'll have a new, a new Python. The beauty of this though is is that I already have all of the required packages that you'll need for the class already uh, loaded. So you can see you have 1.8 of TensorFlow. That is probably the current version for about five minutes and then Google will be on to the next version. But for the semester that I recorded this, that was the current version that we were using. And I will update the Docker image each semester as I as we put in additional things. Now, if you want to see the actual class material stuff, if you go to mount, now this is now that directory that we created earlier. You go into there, here's all the class material. You can open class one. And this is just like GitHub, except now you can actually edit it. It is fully editable. So now you have an environment completely set up. You had to set up Docker, you had to download the image, but you really did not have to do any of the, of the setup that would normally be required for this, this course. The instructions are here. So it's up to you. If Docker is something you're familiar with and you just want to grab a Docker image and do the class that way, this could be a good option for you.